Welcome to this presentation of Wayne Valley Television as the Wayne Valley Indians take on the Manchester Falcons. We bring you postseason soccer tonight as Wayne Valley looks to advance to the second round of counties. Tom, what does Wayne Valley need to do tonight to advance to play Hills in the next game? They're going to need to find a way to break out of this offensive funk. The entire season they've been struggling to put the ball in the net. It's shown by the fact that their leading goal scorer is six guys shared with one. So, I mean, it's clear that the offense needs to find a way to facilitate some goals. All right, Wayne Valley looks to turn their season around tonight as the playoffs begin. Out at midfield, the captains Luke St. Dennis and Anish Bave are conversing with the officials and the captains from Manchester. Tom Wind Valley's coming off a loss in their last game. The PCTI really struggled in that one. Yeah, it's clear that it's clear that the senior goalkeeper Dan Bielsen, who's been out with the concussion since September 14th in their last meeting with Wayne Hills. Senior captain Nish Bave told me before the game that the team has a lot of confidence in their backup, junior Connor Gallo. Please rise for the national anthem. And we'll pause here for the national anthem. All right, we're just about set to get underway here. Alex, you mentioned that this is the start of postseason soccer here for Wayne Valley. Interestingly enough, two years ago, this team was coming into the tournament with a nine seeding counties, but they defied all odds. They went on the road, they were the underdog in almost every game, and they made it to the county final where they unfortunately fell to a perennial powerhouse, Hawthorne Christian. Wayne Valley certainly looking to recreate that magical run from a couple years back. Valley's captains, Luke St. Dennis and Anish Bave, both have three years of experience. They were both on that 2015 team. Do you think that that's going to help them make uh, deep running counties this year? Well, Tom, certainly they bring a lot of experience to the table. I also position change there for the captain, Luke St. Dennis, moving to the striker position, hoping to generate some more office for the offense for the Indian attack today. That's something you always look for out of your captain, someone who's versatile, someone who's going to do what the team needs. He's going to value what's best for the team rather than what's best for himself. Not his most natural position, but if, he, if Coach Rocket thinks that that's going to help them put the ball in the net, I'm sure St. Dennis is happy to do it. Wayne Valley going with a lot of position changes here tonight, looking to shake out the lineup, trying to revitalize that offense. And the rough singles are ready for action. And Manchester's going to kick off here with the ball. And we're underway at Wayne Valley. First round of counties for the Passaic County Championship is on the line. As Manchester controls possession early, taken away by Valley. Control regained by Manchester. Forced to the sideline, and that'll roll out of play. Throw in for the Indians. It'll be Anthony Gandor, the senior, taking the throw in for the Indians. And he'll hand it off to Zach Kasparowicz, the sophomore. 
early on you see center defensive mid Mark Perez really all over the field getting involved in all the action. Pass back to Kasparowicz. Struggles with the defender there. And the cross deep to St. Dennis. But he's ruled off sides. And it'll be a deep free kick for Manchester. Sending out the goalkeeper, Julian Cardenas, a senior. He's all the way at the 40-yard line there. He'll send in. Headed by Gandor, and that'll head out of bounds, and it's an early corner for Manchester. Alex, we mentioned that sophomore goalie Connor Gallo struggled in his new starting role. Do you think that it's up to the defense to kind of pick him up and limit the opportunities that Manchester gets? Well, certainly Gallo's going to have to have some support from his defense tonight if he wants to keep these Manchester Falcons under check. The corner for Manchester into the box, punched away by Gallo, controlled by St. Dennis. Now Manchester recovers. Scrum in the corner. That'll go out of bounds off the foot of the Indians. A throw in for the Falcons. The Indians have to look to gain possession. They haven't been able to get the ball out of their zone for most of the s opening couple minutes. That one looked like a hit off of uh, the midfielder, number 15 for the Falcons. Sparrows will take the throw in for the Indians. Surveys the field. The throw in is taken away by Manchester, but now Wally recovers. Breaking forward, looking for St. Dennis along the sideline. He possesses it, crosses it into the box, takes a shot actually, but that'll be scooped up by the goalkeeper. You saw a great job at number six, Mike Bleeker, pushing the pace, trying to get something going. Something else that each Bobby told me before the game was that Mike Bleeker, even though he's only a sophomore, is really the leader of this midfield group. And with a struggling team, anyone that wants to step up and be a leader obviously has to be welcomed. Bave clears that one. There you see number 15, Omar Kubadi, the former, fo the former football player. That's American football. Bave again sends it deep. And now down the sideline, Valley fights for it. Jack Hersevitz winning the ball there. Now Wayne Valley looking to start an attack. Kicked out of bounds by the Falcons. The Indians will have a throw in in their own side of the field. The throw in taken away by Manchester, but able to recover are the Indians. Leaker has it now. Looking for the open man, can't find him. Bave past midfield, controls the ball. Mark Prez getting in on the action yet again. And that'll be a throw in, it looks like, for the Falcons. Excuse me, check that free kick coming. Just along that sideline. Goalkeeper sends it long. Kasparitz misses the header. And it looks like the Falcons have themselves a free kick. This can't be the start that Coach Rock was looking for. We're only 10 minutes into this half, and it's it's been really a sloppy play here from the Indians. And now a big test here early for Connor Gallo, the sophomore goalkeeper, looking to keep it scoreless. We'll see number seven, Torres, taking the free kick. The wall there blocked in the wall by Bave. Torres recovers, and now Perez gets in on it, and it's kicked away from Kasparowicz. St. Dennis heads it back into play. Bave showing the value of his superior height, probably the tallest player on this field, being able to block that free kick. And now it's Bobby who controls it. End of the middle. Out. 
And now Manchester will send it back for their goalkeeper to handle. That's number 21, the freshman, Max Barbata, looking to get in on the action. Highlighting that Indian youth in the lineup tonight. Alex, you mentioned the youth in this Indian lineup. That's kind of been characteristic of a Sam Rocka coach team because ever since his first year, two years ago, he's had sophomores, he's had freshmen, he's had a lot of underclassmen that have had to step up, as shown by the fact that Anish Bave, Luke St. Dennis, they're three-year starters. They have the experience that pays off now as they're seniors. And now the free kick sent into the box, controlled by the goalkeeper, and he'll throw it in quickly, looking for a counterattack are the Falcons now. But Kasparowicz is there, it looks like. The attacker goes down there for the Falcons and they'll take the throw. Coach Sam Rock in his third year now with the Indians. Looking to make a little bit of a run here. It's a surprising run in counties, but it starts tonight and Wayne Valley needs a win to keep their hopes alive. If the Indians come in on a four game losing streak, they're gonna have to find a way to get out of this funk. Gallo will take the kick from his own goal. Surveys the field. Sends it towards the sideline. Kasparowicz get hits in, gets hit in the face with it. And now busting down the sideline is St. Dennis looking for the ball. St. Dennis gets Corrals it in the middle of the field. Takes a shot on goal and that'll sail just left of the post. So early on, you, you have to think that Coach Rocca's position change for St. Dennis is paying off. He's given a real spark to this Indians offense. St. Dennis showing that speed down the sideline he offers. And now the goalkeeper for Manchester sends it over midfield. Perez looking to take him off the ball. And now Manchester with an opportunity. It's number 10 heading towards the box. He takes a shot on goal and it sails just over the post. So a near goal there early for Manchester. That's a junior midfielder, Silver Martinez, almost putting Manchester on the board early here in the first half. Now Gal with the goal kick. That's Bleeker with the touch. Taken off the ball by Perez. Now Wayne Valley looking to attack again. Looking for Kubadi in the middle, can't find him. Gandor heads it towards midfield. Perez looking to control, but he's taken off the ball. And that'll be corralled by Gallo. Who throws it towards the left side. Finds his man Barbato. Sparowitz sends it towards the middle. Bleeker has controlled it. Towards the sideline, Justin Kennedy now. And over to Kubadi. Kubadi making a move down the sideline, cuts toward the middle now. And he's tripped up, looking for a call from the ref, but he's not gonna get it. Omar Kubadi looking for his first opportunity of the game. Thought he got tripped up there, ref didn't see it. Bleeker controls and sends it back for Gallo. Gallo's forced to make a quick move with it. Back out to Bleeker. Sparowitz has it, but he's taken off the ball. Another slot to play by Sparowitz. He's really not on his game so far. And Sparowitz slides in for the tackle. And the ref's going to blow the whistle now when it looks like Manchester will have a free kick. And that's number nine down on the field. Richards. Good to see him get up on his own power. Another free kick now for Manchester. Looking to score early. Wayne Valley's going to employ a four-man wall here. 
looking to block the free kick as they did last time. He chips it over them, and that'll sail right at the goalpost. That was number 10, Silver Martinez, who missed just wide right. And now Gallo sends the goal kick short of midfield. Bleeker has it. St. Dennis looking to make a move on the left sideline. But that'll be a throw in for Manchester. Bave heads the throw in. Perez with the header now. Fight for possession. Bave kicks it towards midfield. Kasparowicz now with the header. Now Gaynor chasing. Manchester on the move. The kick just misses left of the post. And it looks like Connor Gallo's down. This could be a nightmare scenario for Wayne Valley. So Gandor was trailing there on the play. Manchester broke out in front, and they had an opportunity with an open goal, and they just missed that one. And now for Wayne Valley, the attention turns to the sophomore, Connor Gallo, who's down on the field. Wayne Valley really can't afford to lose another goalkeeper here, Tom. No, they're already struggling with the loss of a senior leader like Bielstein. And like we said, Gallo's been sh struggling. This is hopefully a game that they're going to be able to get him into a groove until B Bill Steen returns. Because similar to Wayne Valley, Manchester hasn't been able to facilitate much offense throughout the year. And now the training staff with Coach Rocker are out there attending to Gallo. Wayne Valley huddles here near the five yard line. Coach Rocca imploring them to push forward. We have a stoppage here as they tend to Gallo. Alex, while I have a break in the action, let's take a chance to admire the beautiful weather we have here for a, a night of soccer. First night with the full moon coming out. Really couldn't ask for anything else if you're a soccer player. Beautiful fall night here in Wayne. Alex, something else you've seen throughout the game is a lot of players are heading the ball. And with all the information coming about at CTE and concussions, a lot of the youth programs are starting to uh, outlaw heading. They're going to say kids shouldn't be able to do that. It's a penalty. Kids will get free kicks for that. What's your stance on that? Well, Tom, it's a loaded question. Tough to change the way the game has been played for so long, but with new information, like you said, coming out, there will be a lot of decisions to be made coming up in the future for youth leagues all across the country. So Gallo's going to walk off the field, it looks like, under his own power. We'll see who Wayne Valley brings in the goal now. So Wayne Valley is looking to rebound here. Already with an injury early. Down to their third string goalkeeper. It's going to be Sean Furtek, the junior. Sporting the all black attire. Alex, this is really the definition of next fan up. That's right. And it'll be Bave taking the kick. About 27 minutes and 50 seconds remaining in the first half, Wayne Valley and Manchester tied 0-0 in the preliminary round of Passaic County Championship. 
as we resume action. Taken off the ball is the sophomore, Justin Kennedy. And now Manchester breaking again. But Bave has it, and Fertek comes out to grab it. Smart play there from Bobby to make sure that Fertek had control of the ball. Just type of steady leadership you expect from your captain. Looks like Perez was pushed there. It'll be a free kick for the Indians. Taken quickly by Bleeker, and he finds St. Dennis down the sideline, but it's kicked out of play by Manchester. <coughs> Indians clearly trying to push the pace here. But the way the game's been going, I don't know if I'd do that. I think Coach Rocco should send a message to his kids that they got to possess the ball and make the defense work because they've been playing defense for most of this first half. Now the Indians regain control. Bave sends it over. Bave's gonna send it towards the box looking for Kubati. And the goalkeeper has it for Manchester. Kubati showing a little bit of disappointment with that call. It's the second call that he felt didn't go his way. Now Manchester sends it into the middle, looking for an attack, cleared by Gandor. Another sloppy play by the Indians. And that'll lead to a throw in for Manchester. If the Indians hope to make a deep run like they did two years ago, they're gonna have to clean up their play. Leaker clears it. The goalkeeper, Cardenas, has it. Sends it out. A little push there from the Indians. Great job by Kabata to keep the pressure on the goalkeeper. And we're seeing James Abyss into the game now for the Indians, number 19. We're seeing him for the first time tonight. Also into the game is another freshman, Steve Molina. So a lot of youth being featured here for the Indians as a throw into Perez. He's taken off the ball. Now Manchester looking to counter. But that effort is thwarted. The Falcons look like they're just playing a more physical brand of soccer. They look like they want it a little bit more than the Indians do right now. Now Kubati is ruled offside as he was making a break for the ball. Kubati jumps the gun again with his, I think that's his third offside of the game. Money Valley looking to force the issue here, rightfully so. Needing an offensive output. And the goalkeeper Cardenas sends it deep towards the Wayne Valley goal and that sails out of play. A throw in for Manchester. Now Manchester will take the throw. Booted away. Taken off the ball is Valley. And now into the middle. Manchester looking to formulate another attack. But Gandor is there. The senior defender. Taken off the ball by Kennedy. Another throw in for Manchester. The shot goes far, far left. Looking for something there was the junior Richards for Manchester. And we're seeing here that the Indians are gonna have their senior leader Bave take the goal kicks instead of the new goalie, Sean Vertek.
That goes just past the 35 yard line. Collision there, looking for the header. Kennedy comes out unscathed, and now Gander will take the throw for the Indians. That's Molina now in the middle of the field with it. He crosses it deep, headed away by Manchester. Bave clears it. Richards has it now for Manchester, showing off the speed, meeting him stride for stride though, is the junior Jack Herskowitz. You see Richards continually try to beat guys down the sideline using his superior speed. Vertek has it. Surveying the field, looking for the open man. The Indians are pushing forward. And he'll boot it deep. Cleared towards the Manchester side of the field, Bave. That'll go out of play. Manchester looking to take the throw. A little bit too much of a running start there. Pass Andor. Streaking down the sideline. Perez looking to cut him off, and he's successful. Looks like that'll be a corner for Manchester. That's senior midfielder Dan Bettemore for the Falcons. That'll be their fourth set-piece opportunity early in the first half here. Closing in on 20 minutes to play in the first half. No score. Wayne Valley taking on Manchester in the first round of Passaic County Championship. The Indians seem to be playing with fire early. Giving up too many, op giving up too many opportunities. Corner sent into the box. Headed by Manchester towards the corner. Sent back into play. Unable to clear it out of the Indians, shot taken, but it won't even get to Furtek. As now the Indians look to clear. Bave cutting him off, almost trips him up. And now another play for Manchester goes down as Wayne Valley is looking for possession. It'll be number 20, Steven Molina, taking the free kick now from about the 39 yard line. And he'll send it long. That's Kennedy now, sends it back. Bleeker looking for something. Towards the middle, Perez takes the shot. But that'll sail high and easily corralled by the goalkeeper. Perez has to be frustrated. But we're seeing some cohesion now in the Valley offense, looking to start an attack. As, the, as this first half progress, are getting better and better looks, which has to be promising for Coach Rocca. Kennedy steps into that one. And now Manchester with it. Taken off the ball by Bleeker. Perez with the touch. Looking for a handball there. They're not going to get it. And the kick easily corralled by Furtek. So Furtek, without ha not having to be tested too much early. We'll see how he handles being put into the game here. Bleeker can't handle it. Now he gets it back. Find St. Dennis. Bave down the sideline. And he's dispossessed. That'll go out for a free kick for the Indians. Now we'll see. S Number seven, Senior. Ivan Alkirchi coming into the game. The senior offensive weapon for the Indians looking to give him a spark here in the first half. We mentioned earlier in the broadcast that only si that six guys are tied for the team leading goals with six and with excuse me with one goal and that'd be Ivan Alkirchi getting in there. It'll be a throw in for the Indians. Bobby pressing his team forward. 
Looks like he'll defer to Jack Herskovitz to take the throw. What a longer possession we've seen for the Indians. Throw into the box, headed away by Manchester, but controlled by Kubati, who takes the shot and sails over the goalpost. Looks like he may have been channeling his football roots. So still scoreless here, but Wayne Valley looking to start some offense, getting a couple more opportunities as this half progresses. Uh, so what do you think that says about Kubati, that he was a football player last year, but now he's starting for the Wayne Valley Indian soccer team? Well, it definitely shows his dedication to the sports he's playing, working hard in the offseason, and finding opportunities to play here. So now Bleeker sends it over, looking for St. Dennis. That's another throw for the Indians. St. Dennis looking to take the throw. We have a substitution now. It looks like the junior, Luca Bajic, will be coming on for the Indians. Kubati sends it back to St. Dennis. I'll be St. Dennis on the header, excuse me. That was Bleeker sending it into the box. Bajic almost making an immediate impact, instant offense. Now Cardanis will send it deep to Manchester, headed by El Kirchi. Scramble for possession. Manchester looks like they come away with it, but stepping in and handing it off to El Kirchi is Abyss, the freshman. And he'll send it down the sideline. Can't find his man. The Indians applying more and more pressure. Bave takes it away. Dishes it off to El Kirchi. Now Molina with it down the sideline. And he sends it long and out of play. Fifteen minutes left in the first half. Wayne Valley zero, Manchester zero, scoreless in the first half early. Now Manchester has it looking to start something. Splitting the defenders, taking a shot, but right at Furtek. Powerful strike there from number five, Alvarez, but Furtek was there ready for it. Alvarez probably getting the best opportunity for any player on either team. Now Furtek sends it deep, his longest kick of the day. Now Wayne Valley breaking down the sideline, looking to start an attack, and tripped up near the 20, and that'll be a free kick for the Indians. So taking the free kick for the Indians will be number six, Mike Bleeker. He'll look to send it into the box and set Valley up with an opportunity to score. Something to look out for, number seven, I'm Al Kirchie, you like Anish. One of the taller players on the field, he'll be able to jump over most of these players and get his head on the ball. And conferring with his coach, Rocca, is Bleeker, who will now send it in, low, touched by Gandor, but that'll go out of play. Goal kick for Manchester. Cardona sends it past midfield. Gander with the touch. Now El Kirchi has it. But the ref signaling that's Manchester ball. Gander unhappy with the call. The number 10, Silva Martinez taking the set piece. Crosses it in. Furtek bobbles it, but he comes up with it. Risky play there. Almost let it slip out. And now he'll throw it looking for El Kirchi down the right sideline. 
But Elkirchi's dispossessed. And now Manchester looking to break. The shot blocked by Elkirchi. Perez moving, he can move on the ball, heads it away. And back into play. Bave with the header to clear it. And it'll be a free kick for Manchester. Indians finding themselves in a really sticky situation here. Now Wayne Valley's gonna look to fortify that wall, hoping to keep it scoreless. So a real scrum for possession there, going back and forth. And Manchester came down with it and took the free kick. That'll be number two. When he Taking shoots. the free kick. Sails over the post. So Wayne Valley escapes again. Another opportunity gone by the wayside for Manchester. Coach Rocca has to be really concerned with how the game's going so far. Too many opportunities. It's difficult enough to play at the third string goalie. The defense isn't helping him out with all these penalties. So now Bave taking the goal kick again. Sending it towards El Kirchi and Molina. Molina with the touch. That goes out of play. And it'll look like it'll be a throw in for the Indians. Taken quickly by Bajic. And the ref will signal he made a mistake and send the throw into Manchester. The Indians getting more and more frustrated with the official. Kick sent towards the box for Manchester. Closing in on his bleaker and he'll have to go out of play. It'll be a goal kick for the Indians. Alex, do you think that these calls that, are keep, that keep going against Wayne Valley are playing towards their psyche? Maybe knocking them off their game a little bit? Well, Wayne Valley's gonna have to not focus on what they can control and look to get some more offensive opportunities if they want to score before this half ends. Dribbled out of play. It'll be a Manchester throw. Looks like it'll be a free kick actually for the Indians. Sending it long. Bajic off the chest. And now Manchester has it again. Gandor throws him to the side. Looks like that'll be a free kick for Manchester. Aggressive play there. Do you think the Indians the are going to have to, do you think the Indians are going to have to amend their aggressive style to cater to the ref's call just the way the game's being called? Well, we'll see. It looks like the refs are calling a tight game here. And now Wayne Valley's going to show a one-man wall. The cross into the box. Taken by Perez, who's tripped up. And it looks like it's going to be deflected off of him. And now he's down in pain on the sideline, but he'll get up. Looks like he just had a little bit of a uh, cramp, maybe. And he'll signal off that he's fine. The throw in for Manchester. High header from Gandor. Elkirchi has it now, and now it'll be a free kick for the Indians. A little too much pressure there for Manchester. It's a bist now. Makes a fancy move to, to get away from the defender. But Wayne Valley loses possession. Looking to gain it back. Elkirchi has it. The crowd makes a lot of noise for Abyss there. Clearly a freshman phenom. <laughs> and now a quick throw for Manchester. And someone's going to get a card now. Looks like he's going to card the senior Iman Elkirchi. Not sure what he did there to deserve that. Well, he's been jawing back and forth to the ref all game. I think that it just came down to the ref saying enough's enough. You got to let it go. Keep playing. Coach Rocco clearly not happy with that. He's going to sub him out immediately. Well, it looks like he's going to have to sub him out, actually, Tom, with these high school rules. One yellow, and you got to take, take a seat on the bench for a few minutes. So now 
It'll be a free kick opportunity for Manchester. Once again, we're seeing that one-man wall from the Indians. It'll be 19, James Abyss, the lone man out there for the Indians. You have to hope that Alkirchi can recompose himself because he's a senior leader on this team and they rely on him too much. He can't let the refs calls frazzle him and get him off his game. Sent into the box. Furtek bobbles it, but he comes down with it. Goes to the ground to make sure he has it. And he'll take his time getting up and making a play with the ball. Furtek playing admirably after being thrust into the starter role. Abyss looking to handle it. Now down the sideline is St. Dennis, excuse me, Justin Kennedy. Wayne Valley unable to gain possession. Now breaking is Manchester. Taking off the ball, now Molina with it. He'll look to send it long for Abyss, who makes a surprising touch on it as the crowd goes wild for him. Dub V. Faithful making their appearance known. So it'll be another quick throw for Manchester. They look to break down the left sideline. A kick towards the middle, cut off by the Indians. We've seen both teams show a little bit of difficulty controlling possession here as Bave dispossesses Manchester and sends it long with his left foot, looking for St. Dennis just short. Bave is definitely looking like one of the better players out there tonight. He's making plays all over the field. And he makes a diving effort to save it, but is unable to come up with it. That's the type of effort you expect from a senior captain. Coach Rock, a clearly ha Coach Rock and uh, his teammates have to be happy with him as the leader of this team. So no score. Throw in for Manchester. And it looks like he stepped on the line maybe. And that'll send the ball over to the Indians. As now Kubadi comes back into the game, subbing in for Abyss. Anthony Gandor coming off the field as well. So Coach Rocky giving a couple play players a little bit of a breather before the end of the half. We're coming up on five minutes to play. Still scoreless, Wayne Valley and Manchester in the first round of the Passaic County Championship. There'll be a free kick near midfield. Sending it long, but the ref will blow the whistle. Not sure what happened there. So now Molina's going to come to take it. Or no, it'll still be Max Barbato, the freshman. Sends it in, but cleared by Manchester. Now Richards again down the sideline, looking to make a move. He's tripped up, and that'll go out of bounds. A throw in for Manchester. Manchester. 